وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا أما بعد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى بعد أن أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليذيقهم بعض الذي عملوا لعلهم يرجعون وقال تعالى ولنبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون صدق الله العظيم Respected elders, brothers, mothers and sisters and students السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is from amongst his names is Al-Hakim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wise. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like as he is powerful and he is uh, merciful and he is kind, similarly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wise. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his wisdom is something that we are not all capable of understanding. We are many students sitting here. You see how many times you tell your parents something that you want. You tell your uh, teachers something you want and they'll say no. And a person will say, but I, I think, why not? I want this. This is what I like. This is beneficial for me. But your parents will tell you that this is harmful for you. you won't, you're not, you're not going to understand that, they'll tell you. They'll say, when you grow up, you understand. And the, the, the righteous and the good children will say to their parents, okay, I thought it was beneficial for me, but if you're saying it's harmful, I'll, I'll accept that. And the kids who are very stubborn, and they'll say, no, no, they'll start whining, they'll start crying, and they'll say that uh, at all costs, I want this, I want this, no matter what it is. Maybe as we grow older, we, as like an older sibling, will understand the wisdom of his parents better than a younger sibling. So if you have a 10-year-old, he'll understand when his mom and dad say some, a no to a 5-year-old. A 5-year-old will understand possibly why a mother or father is saying no to his 2-year-old brother or sister. So as we grow older, we start slowly trying to understand what is the wisdom and the, uh, the, behind what our parents are asking us to do and not to do. But at the end of the day, the father and the mother and the human beings, we're all uh, children, we're all human. We're all makhluq, we're all a creation of Allah. There'll be a time when every son and daughter will one day become the father themselves. They'll become a parent themselves, they'll become a mother themselves. And they will again ask their children not to do something or to do something. They will reach pretty much, you know, by the time they reach 40 years old, they may, may, they may be very well at the same level of wisdom that their father and mother had when they were at 40. Why not? Maybe even more. So, it, it is possible to catch up. It is possible to reach that level. Because at the end, we are all humans. And uh, we can compete with one another in that. But when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no boundaries Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no coordinates there's no latitude and longitude for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no uh, uh, you cannot box in Allah you can't say he's confined to a space you can't you can't say where is he is he here he's there these type of questions are irrelevant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's above and beyond that because Allah created time and Allah created space and Allah created earth and moon and, and everything else in between so we cannot ask this type of question, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sitting here, is Allah sitting there, na'udhu billah. These things are, these questions are, do not apply to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is uh, like a person, as they say, trying to fit a square inside a triangle or a triangle inside a square. It just, just doesn't happen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as He is infinite and endless and boundaryless, His attributes are also way beyond us. And one of Allah's attributes, like I told you, is Al-Hakim, He's wise. We can never appreciate and get a true understanding of Allah's wisdom. We can possibly get a small peek inside it, but we will never be able to truly understand why Allah does what He does. Brothers and sisters, students, it's so important for us to understand this, because many times, maybe even every day, something happens in your life, and you find yourself asking the question, why? Why did this happen? If I do something, which you may directly ask me, why did you do, th do that? And I, I can give you an explanation if I, f if I would like to. If you do something, your parents do something, your elders do something, you can ask. 
But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obviously, there is no place for us to ask, Ya Allah, why? Instead, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that type of question is outright disrespectful. Because it's as though we are doubting His wisdom. Instead, we are taught to, to do tafwil, to completely submit ourselves to Allah's will and say, Ya Allah, you know best. I do not know the wisdom behind this. I can possibly guess the wisdom, but I don't know the reality of it. And one great story that explains this is the story of Musa and Khadr from Surah Al-Kahf where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that Nabi Musa, who was a very knowledgeable, of course, prophet, one day was with his community and they asked him that, oh Musa, who is the most knowledgeable person amongst the people? And he responded by saying, I am. Because he was the prophet of Allah. He had so many occasions spoken to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had received the holy book Torah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His brother was a prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave deliverance to Bani Israel uh, uh, through him. Allah defeated the armies of Fir'aun through him. So he said, I am the most knowledgeable person. Because based on his understanding, he was. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then informed him that, O oh Musa, there is another servant of mine who has knowledge that you don't have. And I would like you now to go visit him and stay with him and learn from him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shares and narrates that story in Surah Al-Kahf. وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِفَتَاهُ لَا أَبْرَحُ حَتَّى أَبْلُغَ مَجْمَعَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ أَوْ أَمْضِيَ حُقُوبًا A teacher and student, Musa and his nephew Yusha, they go on a trip to go find Khadr and to spend some time with him. And the story is definitely amazing, it's interesting and it's long. But I'm going to simply gloss over it just to focus on one point of wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Musa and, Khadr, uh, Musa and Yusha eventually, after a long, hard journey, find Khadr. And they, he requests his company. And he says, هَلْ أَتَّبِعُكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُعَلِّمَنِي مِمَّا عُلِّمْتَ رُشْتَىٰ Oh Khadr, may I spend time with you and my fo- may I follow with you so that you may teach me from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught you. قَالَ إِنَّكَ لَن تَسْتَطِيعَ مَعَيَ صَبْرًا Khadr he is the principal of the school, of Khadr's school. So he has a right to put in any rules that he wishes. And he says, you're a prophet with all due respect, but you're enrolling in my school. If you enroll with my school, you're going to follow my rules. And the rule is that you will remain silent. You will not ask questions. You have no right to ask questions. If you can do this, then you may follow me and come with me and enjoy my school. So the scholars have actually written and spoken so much about the rules of an institution and the rules of a, the etiquettes of a student and a teacher extrapolated and extracted from the story of Musa and Khadr. I remember when I was studying abroad, one of the first days, orientation day school, we had uh, one day Mawlana Tariq Jamil Sahib, whose institution I studied for a year, he came to visit the school on the first day, he gathered all the students, and he spoke for about two, two and a half hours. And just on the story of Musa and Khadr, ex- extracting the lessons from there for a student and a teacher, and the rules of an institution and a madrasa. And then of course later on in our final year, when I was in South Africa under Mufti Radha al-Haq, our Ustad al-Bukhari, he spoke extensively as well. So this story is definitely very amazing. So briefly again, he says, if you remain silent, I will let you accompany me. First stop, they board a ship, Musa and Khadr boards a ship, and, uh, uh, and they were for free were able to make the journey. The people on the ship knew who these people were, Musa and Khadr, and they let them go. They just said, we don't need to charge you, our righteous, pious people. So uh, as Khadr was deboarding, he made a hole in, the, in a plank, took out a plank from the boat. So Musa salam saw that. We heard, Hal jazaul ihsani illa al-ihsan. When someone's nice to you, you have to be nice to them. These people allowed us to board the ship and didn't even charge us. Why would you take out a plank and make a hole in their ship? And their boat. So he asked, Khadr, why did you do that? And Khadr responds by saying, Didn't I tell you not to ask me? And he actually said at the very beginning, وَكَيْفَ تَصْبِرُ عَلَى مَا لَمْ تُحِطْ بِهِ خَوْرًا Oh Musa, how are you so quickly willing to sign on the, on the line here? You know? Without even knowing what's going to happen on this journey. You say, I won't ask. But trust me. And I'm explaining it, this in my words. Trust me, you're going to see things that are just going to startle you big time. Are you sure you're going to be able to keep yourself 
res- you know, quiet and not ask. How do you say, give this guarantee that no, I'll be with you and I'll remain silent? Just watch what's going to happen. And sure enough, he couldn't handle it. He saw the breaking of a plank and he spoke up and he said, Khadr, what is this? So he said, didn't I tell you? He said, I'm sorry. لا تؤخذني بما نسيت. Please do not take me to task for what I have genuinely forgotten. I forgot what I had agreed upon. ولا تُرَقْنِي مِنْ أَمْنِ عُسْرَى. Then they found talaqa. They walked. They went to a. Uh, they found a. Ch- uh, they found a group of children playing, and they found a boy there. لَقِيَ غُلَامًا فَقَتَ لَهُ. He found a child there amongst other kids. Khadr brought the child to one side, and took the life of this child. Killed him, just like that. Killed the child. So Musa is seeing. An innocent boy in front of his eyes being killed. He's shocked. And he says, You have actually killed an innocent soul for just like that? This is horrible. This is a very terrible sin you're doing. He's telling who? Khadr. Khadr radiallahu anhu says, Okay, this is it. If you ask me one more time, you're out. So Musa alayhi salam says, Okay, one more time. I will not, inshallah, ask you again. They went to a village, they went to a town. When they went to that town, and they asked for people to give them food and allow us to stay, there was no hotel business, they would stay at someone's home. At least for three days, people would be willing to accommodate us, accommodate guests. So when you stayed there, they asked them, can you please give us a place to stay? They refused to give them a place to stay. And then he found, Khadir said, oh, there's a wall here about to fall down. How about you roll up your sleeves and help me out here. So Nabi Musa rolls up his sleeves and is building, rebuilding this wall. After so much hard toiling of efforts, Musa salam, looks at Khadir and he says, at least can we charge them a few dollars with that which we can buy ourselves some lunch? Because they haven't provided lunch, dinner, place to stay, nothing even though it's expected that they're supposed to. Can you please ask them for money? And Khadir said, not only no, but this is the third strike, you're out. You you should not have asked me this. So he said, هذا فراق بيني وبينك The time has come for separating between us. You go your way, I go my way. However, سأنبيوك بتأويل ما لم تستطع عليه صبرا I will inform you of those things which you could not remain silent and keep quiet and just watch what I was doing. You kept on asking questions. I'll tell you why I did what I did. And he quickly, and he explained to him. He said, well, the first, the ship, كانت لي بساكين. It belonged to a group of poor people. يعملون في البحر. They used to toil and work hard at the seas, transferring and ferrying people across. وَكَانَ وَرَاءَهُمْ مَلِكٌ يَأْخُذُ كُلَّ سَفِينَةٍ غَصْبًا And there was a, it was a tyrant ruler who would look at every passing ship and boat and if he saw it good for him and he saw it was in good shape, that tyrant would just usurp it, take it away. So I made this hole here so that when his agents of the king see this boat, he will, they will not like it because they'll find a fault in it. They don't want to worry about fixing anything. And these young men, of course they know how to fix their ship. So by, they'll just have to spend a little bit of time fixing their ship, but at least they'll have their ship. Got it? Okay. He said, what about that child? He says, this child it looks innocent, but would he grow up to become a disbeliever? Not only a, a disbeliever who would be a, disobedient to Allah and, and disobedient to his parents, and would bring a lot of misery to his parents. So Allah asked me to take his life away now. Apparently the, fa- the parents will cry, of course. They're obviously going to cry when they lose a child. But it's probably good for both. Meaning, the child loses his life at a young age, inshaAllah ta'ala, he doesn't get an opportunity to sin, whatever he was intended to sin. And then number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced him with a much more righteous, pious child for the parents so that they don't have to suffer at the hands of this kid. This is okay. And the third one, he says, was that true, these people did not host us and they uh, were not nice people. However, Underneath this uh, wall was some, a treasure that was left behind by the, father, uh, by the parents of these orphans. Father, elders died and left behind innocent children, orphans, and they had no one to look after them. Now you tell me, if these people are not giving us food for one day, when this wall falls over and below it, a treasure chest is found, do you think they will retain that and save it for these orphans? Of course not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of His mercy, 
for these innocent yatim and orphans and out of the piousness and the righteousness of the parents and grandparents of these orphans Allah ordered us to rebuild this wall to ensure that these treasures remain preserved until they grow up and they figure out that their money lies underneath here now Musa salam, my brothers and sisters was a very honorable prophet Ulul Azam one of the top the, from the categories of the prophets the five top prophets but his jurisdiction was different. He was a Nabi who received revelation, but his jurisdiction was the apparent things of this world. And Akhirah, of course, hereafter. He was Nabi of the Sharia, ah, of the Zahir, of the apparent things. Well, on the other hand, Khadr was running a different department. He was running the department of, of ba batini, taqwini things, hidden things. Things beyond, beyond the scenes, behind the scenes. That was not the realm of Nabi Musa's efforts and knowledge. So Musa salam, was at the top notch in ilm, but it was a different field. And Khadr was privy and he had knowledge to those things, of things that are hidden from Nabi Musa. Now I want to tell you this, that if Nabi Musa, who is the most honorable, you know, top notch prophet, he has no idea why this child has been killed. He doesn't know why the ship is being broken. He doesn't know why this wall is being rebuilt without a fee. And he's so perplexed that he had to keep on asking, even though he said he wouldn't, because according to his knowledge, what's happening is wrong. You're not supposed to do any of these things. So that's why he was forced to speak up. As a prophet, he can't allow these type of things to happen. So I want to ask you, as adults and young children sitting here, is it really right and sensible for us to demand that we're going to understand why things happen in the world? Why a certain horrible school shooting happens? Why does an earthquake knock out a masjid or innocent people? Why does a disease strike an already poverty-stricken country in the world and wipes out even thousands of people? Why do difficult things and horrible things happen in the world? We will definitely never know the answer to all of them. We can speculate, we can think, we can, we can come up with possibilities. But remember, you and I are not meant to understand those things because we are creation and Allah is creator and there is absolutely no similarity between creation and creator just have trust that Allah is Al-Hakim He's wise and behind, behind every action of His there must be some wisdom there's gotta be it's like these three stories that I shared with you there's wisdom behind all three of them but even Nabi Musa didn't understand that until he was informed and interestingly the Prophet ﷺ is reported to have said I wish Musa alayhi salam was a little bit more patient so we could have learned even more okay, about these inner workings so when they, if this is the statement of the our Prophet alayhi salam we have to also be rest content that everything that's happening in the world is happening with the permission of Allah with the wisdom of Allah no matter how horrible it seems like how despicable it may sound like no matter how hurtful it is to us in our lives there's got to be a hidden plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trust Him for that if we do not trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this, my brothers, then there's chances that a person can lose his or her faith. A person can begin to question the very existence of Allah. And that is happening every day all around us today because of this issue that I just mentioned about. Not trusting Allah's wisdom and constantly questioning and objecting, why does this happen? Why does that happen? When they don't realize that you and I are not God. We're creation of Allah. We're not in the position of leadership we're not a Rabb, we're not a Lord. Stop demanding to have those rights. All of you who work in IT and corporate, how many levels of access they are? How many levels of security clearances they are? As soon as you walk in, you're a human. Your top level VP and the president of the company are all human. They all have to eat and drink. They all have to relieve themselves in the bathroom. They all have to, have to brush their teeth every single day. No matter how amazing they may look, they have to take showers. They're all human. Yet there's such a big difference in security clearances. There's such a big difference in how much information he has and how much, different, how much in information you have. How can we expect that we have the same information that Allah Azza wa Jal has? Doesn't make sense, does it? So we have to trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom and his decisions and rest assured that he knows what's happening. You and I have to simply do what we're told to do. We need to remind ourselves the same lesson we teach our kids every day. Your mom and dad know what they're doing. Just listen to them. We have to tell ourselves, maybe as a father, I actually may make mistakes. But I expect my kids to trust me. 
because I'm a few years older. That's my Lord. I have to repeat this lesson to myself that let my Lord handle affairs for myself and the whole world. He knows what He's doing. Let me just do what He's asked me to do and everything will be fine. I pray to Almighty Allah that He grants us the level of tawakkul and reliance upon Him as is required, the level of yaqeen and conviction in Him, His attributes that is required, and saves us from ever questioning and doubting His existence, His wisdom, and His actions. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Kindly perform the sunnah.